the past month, Chicago had just a ridiculous amount of violence. It had like its most violent day in like 10 years. And then like a couple weeks later, it was like the second most violent day in 10 years. It was like 12 people killed in one day, 46 people injured. It, it, you know, you could say it's not getting worse, but you look at these numbers and it, it looks like it's getting worse. It definitely, it definitely is. Why, why do you think that this type of thing is happening in Chicago right now? Um, I feel like it's just, you know, a lot of people think Chicago is, is full of bad people and there's just no good here, there's not no beautiful places, or it's just killing that goes on everywhere in Chicago when that's not the case. But whatever uh, drama or violence is going on, you know, it's a reason behind everything, you know? And a lot of it is just, um, it's retaliation and revenge, you know? So if, if I kill one of your homies, then everybody that you with feel like y'all gotta kill one of my homies. So if y'all kill one of my homies, then we feel like we got to, you know, avenge him, you know. So it's like an ongoing thing. And as long as it's, and it's not just, it could be family against family, like you and five of your family members against me and six of my family members. Now, by the time it comes to an end, it's like we all dead or it's one or two of us left to kill, you know. But when you're dealing with something that's as big as a nation, like, Gangster disciples or black disciples, you know, that 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 can never end because it's always new members, damn near every day probably. You see what I'm saying? And it's like they're willing to fight and kill for what they what side they're siding with. You know what I'm saying? And it's like even that little reason could be why somebody will pull the trigger because you're disrespecting what I stand for, or something as small as this nigga looked at me too long. You know, so with all that going on and everybody feeling like they got to get retaliation and revenge, you know, um, and plus we growing up in a time where uh, fighting and boxing isn't common. You know what I'm saying? It's not common. It's not, you know, you got rappers that's talking about, you know, I don't box. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'd rather shoot you than save, save my energy, you know? Like, niggas out here in the streets, like, they not trying to get in the weight room and, you know, pump no iron, lift no weights and shit. I'm I'm skinny, or I'm a little nigga, so I'm going to keep this fucking gun with me. And if, if whoever disrespect me, then this is what they going to get. It's just, it's just, the, it's, it's that, it's the mentality and, and it's the youth. Like, uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago, it was mostly any murders was happening. This was like, that's like, that was like grown man shit, you know, to where it's like now, uh, music has probably helped it become more cooler for the youth because you seeing 16 and 15 year old kids get record deals, you know, and this is what they're talking about. So, so a lot of these killings today is really kids with it's mostly kids and and, and, and young uh, men with guns in their hands, you know, not just grown men. So you're dealing with a, a, a wider age range than what you was 20 and 30 years ago. And when that's the case, yeah. it's only going to multiply. Well, and, and a lot of the Chicago hip hop is gang related. Yeah. When you look, when you look at the, you know, Lil Mouse, you look at Lil Herb, you look at Chief Keef. I mean, like all, all these dudes will mention certain gang affiliations and stuff like that in their music and in their interviews. I mean, you even had situations, I remember there was some crazy situation with like some, some white kid from the suburbs, who was like, I think was a little Dirk fan, was talking a bunch of gang shit, which was completely made up and ended up getting killed over that, over like some Instagram posts. I didn't know that, but yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it, it, it's insane. Um, but you yourself aren't affiliated with any of that. No, I'm not part of no gang, I'm a gang bang. Okay. Now, what, what kept you, being in this type of environment, though, what really kept you from affiliating yourself with gangs? Um, a lot of my homies are. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't got nothing against people that do, but I just, I go, I, I, I carry myself a little bit different in whatever I do, you know, and as far as the choices that I make in life, you know, to where 
it's common sense that no being part of a gang has never helped anybody become successful. It's never helped anybody become a better father or, or a better son, you know, or a better brother, you know what I'm saying? Or, or a better rapper, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's never helped anybody, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's done nothing but uh, bought unwanted attention, you know what I'm saying? Uh, life risking situations, you know, making your mama and family worry, you know what I'm saying? And it don't take rocket science to sit back and look and see that, you see what I'm saying? Like join a game for what? So so you so you don't feel like you alone. So you feel like we deep. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a lot of people out here that can't stand on their own anyway. It's a lot of niggas that's tough or then did shootings, but they would never be able to go do that on their own. They would never go be able to go hunt another man on their own. I'd rather one of them possibly get shot then then I then then I get shot. You see what I'm saying? Or if we or if I get in trouble, like I remember at a time even niggas that I used to hang with would go would be about to go make a serve and be like, hey bro, you ride with me over here to go like you and me to ride ride in the car with you. For you to go sell something for you to make some money. Now if we get pulled over, we all gonna be talking about it, it ain't our shit. Then we both gonna go to jail. Like this is your business. Like go handle your fucking business, you know? Unless you fucking scared. Like, it's a lot of people that don't, don't know how to stand on their own. And, and a lot of shit that, uh, that you have to do in life, you know? And I feel like Chicago really needs somebody to be like, you know, I, I'm, I'm a neutron. You know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not part of no gang. It's just like, the way that it's going is like, oh, you rap, you from Chicago, what gang you in? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, okay, he with them, or oh, he one of them, you know? And I just feel like, you know, time for change and shit like that. And somebody really needs somebody that's, you know, not just talking about gun shit or violence and bad shit. Like they can put messages, you know, uh, in some of these kids and grown men's, you know, heads and, and, and uh, you know, with some, you know, with some substance and, um, you know, give them a little guidance here and there. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time... Um, Show them that you can stand on your own. Like you can make gangster music and not be committed to a gang, you know, and still even be cool and friends with everybody that you was friends with. That's in that gang. Like them, yeah, they're my homies. I grew up with them, but I'm I'm not, you know, I'm that's I'm not part of I'm not part of that gang. You know, so many niggas want to yell on camera, you know, pull out Snapchat videos and cameras and be yelling gang, 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 gang. Like it's it's cool to them. You know what I'm saying? And um and they that's living life to them, you know what I'm saying? And uh I just I, I could just see things for really what it is. Like that that can't benefit me in no type of way. That can only hurt me, hurt what I'm trying to do. How can I be on Instagram or all these social medias? I'm making videos and I'm throwing down G D and then uh and now I can't even go conduct business on on, on a certain side of my own city. Because I got, it's GDs over here, you know? Or people felt like, oh, I remember the time you made the Instagram video and you was throwing this down. I'm going to pop his ass. I'm going to shoot his ass because I'm a GD and he disrespected me. Now, when I see this person, I don't know who they are. They're not famous. But they know me. They know what I did. They remember that, that day back 97 weeks ago when I was throwing down GD on, on Instagram. Like, how much sense do that make? When I could just been doing what I set out to do, um, you know, being great at, at my talent and, you know, providing for my family and staying true to myself, you know, and, and what I do, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, yeah, I just I just really I see things for what it is. You know, I, I refuse to be part of the cycle and to be programmed like the next uh, another Chicago rapper. I'm not. People gonna hear me and they they not they can't say. Oh, it's just another Chicago rapper. He's gonna rap about 30s and 40s and Gucci and Louis and Fawns and how he uh, fuck thoughts and and how he gonna put a K at the end of this gang name and how much Lean and Molly Water and all this shit is like that's that's not the, that's not the case with me. But being in the Chicago rap scene and being in that type of environment, you know. Shit does happen. 
You know, there was the whole thing about Lil Reese making some comments about you. Right. So what was that about and how did that get worked out? Um, what was it about? It could have been about a, a lot of things. You probably have to interview him and ask him that. But um, me, I don't, um, you know, any bullshit, that shit get no promo from me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, that's not what I set out to do. You know, I didn't make a Twitter to be uh, responding to hate. I'd rather respond to a fan that's showing love, you know, before I, um, you know, respond to somebody trying to uh, talk down, you know. And um, so that's that's a small thing to a giant to me. Like, I don't, I can't, I can't answer that question for you. Okay. Did you ever, did you ever see him or talk to him after after that? Uh, the yeah, I've I seen him. I've definitely it, seen it him. Is what it is. Uh, yeah, he walked right past me, and, and it was, and it was nothing said. What happened with the whole Lambo Low situation? I don't, I don't know. I just, I seen him fight somebody in the club. He, he definitely wasn't fighting me. Or none of my niggas. Okay, because there's a video that may, makes it sound like you're the one that got into the fight. Yeah, it makes it sound like that. You know, people need, like I said, they need promo. I think he even made a video saying, yeah, nobody touched Montana, and Montana wasn't fighting him, and, and, it, and it was all love when he seen me. So I don't know. Okay, so, so all that's being basically taken out of, out of context. You didn't have right. nothing to do with it. You were involved in it. Exactly. I mean, I, I think it's, it's good, ultimately, not to feed into the shit, because I come from a time before social media, when if you wanted to get at someone, you had to either physically see them, or you got to actually record a song and put it out through your record label, <laughs> right. you know, like hit them up. Right. There, 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 was no, there was no way to just say, fuck you on Twitter. It just, there was just no option for that type of thing. Right. You would actually see the person. So... I think it's almost too easy to create bad situations these days and to be able to just not get involved in it. You know, like people talk shit about us all the time. Famous people, right. famous rappers. We've, ne we, we've never responded publicly. Right. If, if, the, if the name comes up in an interview, I just say, hey, I'm a fan of their music. I'm looking forward to their album. Right. Next question. <laughs> That's what I've been handling it the whole time. So I think it's cool to handle it that way. I, I don't think they're, you know, being professional about it will always win. Being, being, being ignorant about it will have different variations of, of losing. Sometimes it's a small loss, sometimes it's a major loss. I, I know Jaden a little bit, you know, we run into each other in Calabasas. That's cute. Uh, he can date all the he, white He's wearing girls a dress last time. Last time I seen him. To. Yeah, he's wearing a dress last time I seen him. Okay. Does, uh, he, wear, does he come down to Crenshaw with one on? I don't think he goes to Crenshaw, period. I don't think. I, oh, he might slip down there, but he ain't got no goddamn skirt on when he comes down there. I bet you that. Speak up for the black community on the main stage. Because she don't got to do that. Beyonce's rich. Beyonce's not black or white. She's Beyonce. All right? <laughs> She's not man or woman. She's Beyonce. She's reached that level like Oprah. Like, Oprah's just an entity. That's what Beyonce is. So Beyonce don't have to speak up for us. 